YouTube, what's going on? Hope you guys are having a fantastic day today. We are back with another Call of Duty mobile video. Hope you guys have been enjoying them. If you are and you haven't already, please do me a huge favor. Hit the subscribe button down below. It is free. I promise you it will cost you nothing. And it's a lot easier than waiting for my videos to pop up on your home screen or typing in my username into your search bar. Anyways, it is the start of a new year, and as such, I want to give you guys a few tips and tricks that hopefully will apply to just about everybody. Some of you might already know some of this, some of you might not know any of it, but today we're going to be going over tips and tricks for some mistakes that you might be making in Call of Duty Mobile that you can definitely fix with a couple easy steps. If you guys enjoy the video, please do me a huge favor, drop a like down below, and if you want to see anything similar to this in the future, let me know down in the comments as well. But without any more talking, we're going to go ahead and hop into the video. <laughs> Mistake number one that a lot of players make whenever it comes to Call of Duty Mobile is assuming that the best strategy whenever it comes to sensitivity and settings is to just copy a YouTuber or a pro player when it comes to their settings and sensitivities. This is a big mistake for a number of different reasons. Number one, your experience level probably varies from theirs a lot. So a player that's been playing the game a lot longer is going to be able to control higher sensitivity and as such, it'll be easier for them to adapt to it than it will be for you if you're just now starting out in the game. Number two, there's a good chance that you're also playing on a different device from that person. So different devices have different DPIs, different sizes, a lot of different factors. And because of that, most of the time, it's not going to work for you to just automatically copy somebody else's sensitivities, mainly because there's just so many different things that separate devices and the way that different sensitivities work. For the most part, you're going to need a different sensitivity for every different device. Number three, your fingers are probably not the same length as that player's fingers. And because of that, that's going to factor into your sensitivity. Somebody with longer fingers is not going to need to swipe as far because they can go for their length with one swipe. All those factors combined, the moral of the story, don't just straight up copy somebody else's sensitivity. There are a few tips that I'll give you when it comes to sensitivities. You do want your standard sensitivity to be the highest and you gradually move down with the longer that your scope gets. If you're struggling a lot in close range gunfights, you'll probably want to switch to something like a speed acceleration or a distance acceleration. But if you're just struggling to be accurate at all, fixed speed is definitely going to be a really good starting point because it is the most consistent among all of the speed accelerations my best advice to you would be try out a bunch of them don't make your acceleration too high i would recommend probably somewhere between 1 and 80 anything above 80 is definitely going to be difficult to control especially if you're just now starting out the game but really try out a lot of different things and just see what feels most comfortable to you because in the long run that's going to be what ends up helping you the most Second mistake that a lot of people make when it comes to Call of Duty Mobile is trusting the in-game stats. This is something you don't want to do because the stats that the game shows above the gun, uh, the scale from 1 to 100 for a bunch of different stats, is usually pretty inaccurate. This is the one category where I'll say you should absolutely trust what YouTubers say when it comes to gunsmith builds and things like that because there are a lot of things that are happening to your gun that are not being shown by the in-game stats and as such it's really important for you to understand how a lot of these different attachments work so that you can adapt your gunsmith build to whatever it is that they're doing. That brings me to my third point, which is a little more geared toward Gunsmith, and that is don't focus just on damage range and ADS speed when it comes to building out a gun because there's a lot that you need to know about what those attachments do based on what gun it is. Especially for ARs and SMGs, damage range might be a little bit helpful, but a lot of times you're going to be sacrificing things like ADS bullet spread. And ADS bullet spread is something that's difficult to understand even for people that have been playing the game for a long time, but ultimately it's just a random amount that your bullets are spreading beyond where your crosshair actually is. And as such, it's actually one of the most important stats in the game. A couple more things you should never do in Call of Duty Mobile is whenever you're making a sniper build, never add any attachments that increase damage range or ADS bullet spread accuracy. On the converse of that, you never need to be worried about adding attachments that are going to hurt your damage range or ADS bullet spread accuracy because neither of those stats has any impact on a sniper with the exception of the outlaw, which typically is not one that you're going to be using as your go-to. So you'll see right here, minus 20% damage range on the DLQ whenever you throw on the OWC light suppressor. With that in mind, it might not make sense that I decide to use the OWC light suppressor, but... 
every single sniper with the exception of the outlaw in the hand hitbox area is going to do the exact same amount of damage at every single range which means for the DLQ from like the lower torso and up it's always going to one shot regardless of how much you decrease the damage range it's the same for the locust it's the same for the arctic damage is consistent all the way across it may vary a little bit with wall penetration but that's not really going to be a big factor and as such never really need to be worried about damage range and you also never need to be worried about ADS bullet spread accuracy. So you can see the combat stock hurts your ADS bullet spread accuracy by 10%. ADS bullet spread was removed from snipers altogether in a recent update, which means you don't need to worry about ADS bullet spread accuracy at all because snipers are now always going to hit exactly where the crosshairs align, which was not something that was implemented that way whenever Gunsmith first came to the game, but it was changed just due to the randomness of the effect, and as such, that's another stat you don't need to worry about. Another mistake that I see a lot of people make in Call of Duty Mobile is kind of blindly going for the objective without paying attention to what your teammates are doing in the game. So you'll see my initial move off the start of the half is not going to be to initially push right toward the B flag. What I'm doing right now is securing map control over here. On Nuketown especially, having control of these head glitches is super, super important. Even though it doesn't allow you to get close to the B flag, it lets you control some of these side angles that your teammates might not be going for, especially if they are trying to capture that objective. So you can see, now that I've controlled this side of the map, it's going to be a lot easier for my teammates to take control of that B flag. We can also get a couple additional threats over here and because they're not able to take control of this side of the map that just makes it that much easier for my teammates so we we're actually losing in the second half just because i was kind of running around doing nothing uh in short map control is a super important part of playing the objective and a lot of people just kind of look at the flags capped in the game and they assume that that's the one indicator of whether or not you've actually played the objective but one of the most important parts of playing the objective in call of duty mobile is map control and that's what we're doing right there now the way that happens from map to map really does vary a lot i don't know how that guy survives but on new count it's pretty simple and especially on firing range all you really have to do is hold down those crucial hold points like top tin top of wood and also trailer uh, and pretty much every map has a few specific strategic points that are going to help you be able to capture the objective a lot more easily but this is one thing that especially when you're solo queuing makes it a lot easier for your team to win because instead of blindly running at the flag by yourself and dying over and over again it opens up opportunities for your teammates so that they can play that objective the next tip is one that i assume that just about everybody knew but actually prior to the big nerf to shotguns and by the way shotguns are actually still a really good option especially for close range if you are a very accurate player but a lot of people are not aware of the fact that ADSing with a shotgun does actually increase the amount of damage that you do just because it increases your ADS bullet spread accuracy like it does with the majority of other games where you're using a shotgun. You see right here, ADSing does 167, back here, 81. Even at the legs, 108, no ADS, 135. Sometimes it is a little bit random. I will say that. Sometimes it is a little bit random, but effectively what ADSing does for the most part, and especially whenever you have a build that increases the ADS bullet spread accuracy of a gun, for shotguns, this can be really, really deadly. And I'll, I'll give you guys a better example because you start to see it more and more at range. You're going to see 72 right there, 48, 48, pretty much impossible. Well, every once in a while, you'll get like a 76 but in general, you are going to do more damage on average. And we'll go ahead and switch to an ADS bullet spread accuracy just to kind of prove the point. By the way, granulated grip tape, probably the best option as far as increasing ADS bullet spread for any gun. OWC tack laser, also a really, really good option. So this right here, basically a max ADS bullet spread accuracy build. And it's something you're going to see a lot more whenever you're in range gunfights. But you'll see right there, 72 easy one tap to the upper body or even to the lower body if you are accurate enough you'll see very unlikely that we're ever going to be able to one tap at that range when we're hip firing with the by 15 but this is one of the best guns as far as ranged accuracy and when you're going to be able to one tap easily at 10 meters by 15 is pretty much automatically going to be a decent option for pretty much anybody who has a decent amount of accuracy and you'll see even back at 20 meters still able to do a decent amount of damage not quite as good but if you're lucky, you might even land 100. 
So hopefully there was something that was helpful for you guys in this video. If you want to see more videos like this, if you feel like there's any common misconceptions that I may have missed out on that should have been in the video, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. But that's going to be it for the video. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure to drop a like down below. Subscribe to the squad if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time.